Okay, selection of the loop gain reference. That turns out to be important. Otherwise, the model is not meaningful. So let's do it. So the first step, we want to have the design of the ideal transfer. That is the feedback network. So, and, and, uh, and, uh, and the nullor. And how did we do that? We sense the load quantity that we want to have. We create a copy of the source quantity with a feedback network. So it does, the feedback network then has the reciprocal transfer of the transmission parameter that you want to fix. Then we compare it with the source quantity and we nullify the error with a nullor. And that gave us the structure of a negative feedback amplifier. So here we did it for the voltage amplifier. You see, we sense the voltage, which is done in parallel with the load. We want to have some kind of voltage gain. So we make a divider here, and this is a divider. You can make it also with a transformer, but here we used uh, impedances. So it's a passive divider. And then we should have here a copy of the source quantity. And this one, this nullator sets the condition that this should be zero. So the nullor nullifies the difference between the copy and this one. So VL will be one plus Z1 over Z2 times VS. That is how we designed the uh, ideal transfer of the amplifier. And now we are going to study the controller, of course. So we have this model, this feedback network, and um, uh, let's say you make a model, we'll make a model of an operational amplifier. We have seen simple models of operational amplifiers. And if you want, for example, to know the DC gain of the operational amplifier, you just make a model of an operational amplifier that only has DC gain and DC input resistance and DC output resistance. And if you want to have a model that also has dynamic element, uh, uh, aspects in it, you uh, put input capacitance there and output, uh, you make the, the, the output impedance more, more fit on the, on the curves from the data sheet, et cetera. So then we have this um, asymptotic gain. Uh, the gain can be written as a function of the asymptotic gain. And we have a two-step design if the asymptotic gain is the ideal gain, because then in the first step, we design the ideal gain and we substitute this one for the asymptotic gain, forget about this one and design the loop gain. That's the idea. That is the two-step design. So step one, we design the ideal gain. Step two, we design the deviation of the actual gain from the ideal gain, because this should be unity. And that's why we call this a servo function. A servo is a kind of follower. So uh, the, it should be unity. This And the deviation from unity tells us something about the error that we make in the second step with respect to what we designed in the first step. So the ideal gain is the asymptotic gain. If the controller behaves as a nuller, in cases in which the gain of the loop gain reference becomes infinity, because that's how it was defined. The asymptotic gain was defined for taking the loop gain reference, for letting the loop gain reference go into infinity. And the ideal gain was defined as having a nuller as controller. So if both conditions are the same, if the nuller, if the sorry, the controller becomes a nuller, when the loop gain reference goes to infinity, then the ideal gain is the asymptotic gain, and then this expression can be written with and in this way. And that is the two-step design method described in example. It's not always possible to do so. And then the loop gain is not the unique measure for describing the correspondence between the gain and the ideal gain. There is a lot of stories about loop gain. Many people say that if you have the properties of the loop gain, that you know everything of your amplifier, you know its stability, but that is not true. An amplifier is stable if the poles of the gain are in the left half plane. And if there is a relation to those of the loop gain, then you may have, an, then you may say something about the loop gain. So phase margin and amplitude margin, which you maybe know from control theory, is only meaningful 
if phase margin and, and amplitude margin, which are properties of the loop gain, if the loop gain has a relation to the gain. Otherwise, it is not meaningful. And if there are lots of other terms in this relation, uh, then it can still be unstable. And this has to do with the selection of the reference variable. And in block diagrams, it's always okay. But in electronic circuits, it can be complicated. So that's what you should realize. The loop gain is, can, if, if it is not possible that the loop gain, uh, that, sorry, if the reference variable goes to infinity, that the controller becomes a nuller, then the loop gain is not the unique measure for this error that we wanted to have. So the problem is, for example, a nuller is an ideal, is a perfect two port, is a natural two port, but the controller seldom behaves, behaves as such. There's common mode transfer, there may be common mode impedances. Uh, so common mode behavior of the, of the thing may play a role. What is a natural two port? So when is a two port model equal to a network model? Well, that is a two port has two equations and um, a network with four elements needs three equations. So that's something else, that's something different. So if uh, the two ports are interconnected at one point and you have a three terminal network and you need two, two equations. So if your two port has three nodes, then it is okay. If the ports are terminated with one port, there can be no transfer through the, through the, through the ports anymore. So then we, it's also correct. And if the, ne the network is a natural two port, if you don't know what is a natural two port, maybe uh, uh, then you go to chapter 18, network theory, because it would be an extra presentation to include it here. So in other cases, we, the network need to be described with more than two equations and effect of common mode port, port uh, vo uh, uh, voltage and currents cannot be ignored and we have errors with respect to this model. Then there's another thing and Bode was already aware of that when he wrote the theory on negative feedback amplifiers. He didn't use the term loop gain anymore. He used return difference and return ratio because it was not clear what loop gain was meant. If you have a multi, that was in the time of vacuum tubes. If you select your reference variable in one vacuum tube, there is a loop already. The plate capacitance, which is, if you know something about transistors, the collector to base transistor uh, capacitance or the drain to gate capacitance in the MOSFET. It creates an internal loop. And if there is an internal loop in the thing, it will never become a neuron anymore because there's already feedback. So there, all, there often exist local loops inside the controller and in such a local loop, you should not select a reference variable. Fortunately, with operational amplifiers, things are simple. We can always make an in, a natural two port of that, having an input circuit and an output circuit and only a gain and no common impedances between those two. So, but we have a check, we have a method for checking this. We have with SlyCap, we can check if over the operating range of interest, we, uh, the, the asymptotic gain approximates the ideal gain. And if the dire transfer is much smaller than the ideal gain. If those two, are, those two are true, then the loop gain is the only thing describing the error, the deviation between the gain and the ideal gain that we initially designed. Okay, conclusions. The source to load transfer obtained from the estimated gain model always equals the transfer obtained from network analysis. That is the main thing that is very important. Your result of the estimated gain model, whatever you select as loop gain reference is exactly the same as your network model. That is the strong point of the negative feedback model. But it is only meaningful if something else happens. So the asymptotic gain model facilitates only the two-step design uh, of feedback amplifiers if the loop gain reference is properly selected. And that means that the controller 
becomes a nullor if the loop gain reference is replaced with a nullor. So if the gain of a controlled source becomes infinity, then basically it is it becomes a nullor. So if the controller becomes a nullor, the controller becomes a nullor if the loop gain is replaced with a nullor. This is exactly what Slycap does. If you ask Slycap to calculate the asymptotic gain, it replaces the controlled source you select as loop gain reference with a nullor. And then it gives you the asymptotic gain. And if this is the same as the ideal gain, then you select it, the loop gain reference at the, at the right place. So, but, and then we have a way of verifying this with SlyCap because the asymptotic gain should approximate the ideal gain over the frequency and operating range of interest. So if we make a amplifier that should have a bandwidth of 10 megahertz and you see only deviations at frequencies larger than 100 megahertz, you say, okay, but I'm designing this thing for 10 megahertz and what it does at 100 megahertz might be not so important. So you can forget about it. 